Hey everybody, it's Chuck and I'm back out in the shop. It's been quite a while and the reason for that is the walleye have been biting and I've been a little bit lazy. But I'm getting ready to go up to Saginaw Bay, uh, Lake Huron for the third installment of the Michigan Walleye Tour. Uh, this is going to be the Super Tournament. This is the 25K Tournament. And my partners and I have been doing pretty good, so we're making it up for the third trip. Hopefully we keep the train rolling and we can qualify for the championship. But today I am getting ready to head up. So that means I am tearing down, respooling, organizing, getting all my totes in a pile so I can just pack up and leave on Wednesday. And one of my main options I'm going to have when I get up there is to pull some meat. And when I say pull meat, that means I'm pulling crawler harnesses. Uh, they're going to be behind my weights. They're going to be off my church tackle boards. And I've got a special little uh, technique that I'm going to introduce while I'm up in Saginaw, uh, specifically all gray. And that'll be a separate video, but that's just the teaser for what's coming up ahead. Today I'm going to focus more on the evolution of crawler harnesses when it comes to me. How I used to do it, you know, was it effective? What I'm doing now, and I've just recently switched over this year. Um, but it's been probably a long time coming. Okay, so I'm going to start off with the basics. I used to be one of those guys. I still am to a certain degree, don't get me wrong. But I would take the pool noodle, right, and then I would have all my colors and say if this was the standard size that I had cut I would have two to three colors on each one all right all these are ready to go what I used to do was have two of these on the boat and they would have anywhere between 32 and 36 depending on the size of the noodle and what was on sale at that time of the year so I might have as many as 72, at least 64, with two or three colors on each one. It's a lot of room. And when I was just fishing with my buddy Cliff on his boat, he had a cuddy cabin. So we didn't really care how much. And if it was on my boat, we would just cherry pick the blades we wanted to run that day and take one tote with us. But you go up to a tournament, you never know what you're going to run. You want to bring everything and those glass boats just don't have the room for this. Okay, so out with the old, in with the new. This is the new. All my Colorados have been chopped, all my hatchets have been chopped. Uh, willows, whiptails, they are ready to go now in that bag. I used to hate the quick change clevises. These plastic things to me were worthless. Uh, even back 20 years ago when I started getting in more into tournaments, I was never a big fan. You know, I lost one blade and that was enough for me. I never ran them again. So I had everything pre-tied. All those harnesses you saw, all the ones like this on the noodles, they had their beads. They had either a number two or number three folded clevis, metal clevis, and it worked. I mean, don't get me wrong, it had its drawbacks. About the third or fourth fish, I would have to run my hand from the top knot on the hook up through just to make sure that I didn't have any nicks. Because uh, once you get a nick in your line, that line's pretty much worthless. You might get the fish back, you might lose kicker that you need to really jump up or take even take a lead in a tournament so never liked them I lost one blade was on a buddy's boat a couple weeks ago for the Doc Harpum up on Augre and I could see the stress on it you know not everybody just throws their stuff away but this had been used a couple times and it's like I'm not doing that so what did I do well the guys over at Dutch Fork used to have a quick change uh, clevis. It was two plastic sleeves, 
the larger one at the bottom would have your line going through it. And even back then, I was putting five, six uh, for like uh, number six Colorado, that would take seven beads. If it was number five, it would take six beads. I want that blade just above that top knot. And I still do, but I'll get into that in a minute. I did not like the way their wire fastened or actually lack of fastening. So I didn't do it. I, you know, I looked at it and was like, yeah, no. So they made some improvements. There's actually a clip on it now. Uh, the top part is uh, the metal wire that is the clasp is actually inside the plastic on the blade. And uh, I'm going to say it spins just as good as the metal ones did. Maybe even a little easier. But I don't get the line wear. You know, no more scuffs. I did a local tournament uh, uh, the uh, Detroit Beach Boat Club. Had all those harnesses still on and went up and started pre-fishing all gray. Kept those same ones on. Just changed the blades. And then the night before the tournament, I checked the lines and I think I had to use two new harnesses. Uh, when I say harnesses, I'm not talking about the beads with the blades like what I used to do. I will have one of these on the boat during a tournament each day or pre-fishing each day. And this has my line on it. And I run a three-hook harness. You know, conventional wisdom is, you know, I don't care. I don't follow it anyway. But if you use two hooks, a lot of times you will get bit off in the middle. And I absolutely hate seeing my worm come back in two pieces when it hit a spot on the harness that didn't have a hook. So I run three hooks. Um, I'm going to get into this a little bit later because I'm going to show you a couple of tips that I don't really share too often. The last time I did it was probably 10 years ago when I was still writing for the newspaper. And to start out with, all my harnesses are six foot long. Wow. You know, standard is 36 inch. Maybe 44, 42, uh, depending on if you buy them on a regular basis that are already pre-made. But I don't want to do that. I want somebody else's line. I don't want somebody else's hook. I want my gear on there, something that I trust. So first off, I tie everything out with 20-pound big game. Do I need fluorocarbon? I don't think so. It sure hasn't affected my fishing in the past. But I could also see now that I'm only going with two or three, four of these a year, you know, I just might buy a 200-yard spool of uh, fluorocarbon and still run the 20-pound. My wingspan is 6 foot, like I mentioned, and my St. Croix are 8 foot, so that's perfect for me. All right, I can keep the rod tip up. I can still get the lure toward the top of the water. Whoever's doing the netting can get the net job done. So... Fluorocarbon, mono, up to you. I've caught a lot of fish on monofilament, and big game is not the most expensive stuff in the world either. Okay, next up. I'll be the first one to tell anyone if it's not my idea. And I don't think this person has really advertised it, but I'm going to do it for them. Uh, when somebody takes a picture of a fish or takes a picture of their gear, you know, a lot of people just look at the fish or look at the rod and the reel. And I'm thinking, I'm going to take a little bit closer look. I'm going to see if there is any land in the background. Or, you know, they think they're being smart by taking it on the backside where there is no land on the boat. And did I just see Sputnik out in Lake Erie? Maybe I did. Maybe they gave me a clue to where they were at. If I'm looking at a rod and reel, I'm not looking at the rod and reel. I'm using St. Croix and I'm using Daiwa's. So I already know what I'm going to be doing. That's the best, that kind of thing. But I'm looking at their rig. And Ross Robertson, one of the guys I used to work with at the Cabela's over in Dundee, had a picture not that long ago, and I noticed something. 
And it was like, wow, what a time saver. You know, I mentioned before that like on a number six Colorado, I would take seven beads. Ross was using something a little bit different that it only uses three beads. And it goes back to, and I, I remember seeing these things back in like 1982, 83, when they first started coming over from the West Coast. And I don't mean Lake Michigan, I mean this uh, Pacific. Max Lures. You know, there used to be a really nice couple, uh, Bill and Bear, uh, Bernadine Ayers. And they would have the Max 100 up on Saginaw Bay. And I would go to it and we'd fish the tournaments. And, you know, that was the, the Smile Blades, the... Butter, uh, that mylar finished light, quick spinning, slow speed blade. And it was like, yeah, you know, I never really paid attention to it. You know, conventional was five, six beads, six, mil six millimeters. Um, somebody, and I think it was Joe Okada from Wisconsin. I've seen the video, but it's been such a long time. I, I hope I don't get everything wrong, but, uh, Take some thin mono, two, four pound, six, whatever. I uh, wouldn't go any bigger than six. And he had all the beads and combinations on these little strings. And you would run your 20 pound test through the hole, but then you still had to worry about. Okay, did it work? Yes. Was it better than threading on six, seven beads at a time? Yes. Was it this good? No. No, it wasn't. Three beads. And I just took this off one of my St. Croix's because I will be re-spooling and calibrating today. This is, I shortened it. Remember I said that I usually have 60 feet or 6 foot. There we go. And you might be able to tell what I'm talking about without me even saying it. And going back to the Max Lures, these, are, or that is, a stack bead. Starts out at two at the bottom and claims to be a six millimeter at the other end. Okay. One bead. Then for my middle bead, and I think Ross did this, but again, it was just a snapshot. I was more worried about the stack beads. I'll put another bead in there just to change the color up. In this case, it's orange. And then I will take another stack bead. And that is going to be roughly seven different Colorado or uh, six millimeter beads. And you can see it's just above the knot, perfectly where I want it. I'm ready to go fishing. All right, that's going to spin around and round. That quick change clevis works real well. The pink over the antifreeze pink. Right. And if I want to change this up, there's nothing wrong with that. For whatever reason, if this color is not going, I can take, for instance, a number six bait fish image blade from Northland Tackle. And I can go pop that, take that blade off, put that blade on, snap it underneath the little catch. Make sure I do that the right way. There we go. Pink and chartreuse. I can live with that. So I can run multiple color blades on that same blade pattern. And I don't have to keep changing them out. I don't have to pull basically a brand new harness off just to put on a new one. Just because the blade was different. Huge. Time saver. There have been times I would be out here until 2 3 o'clock at night tying stuff up. Not anymore. I might do 120 and that might, that'll might that last me the whole year if I get to them all. Because of these beads, because of that quick change clevis, I did the local tournament, Detroit Beach Boat Club. I did the all-grade tournament, the Doc Harpum. Only changed out two leads the whole time. And that was just finally showing space. And this one was used at the Doc Harpum all day long. Nowhere whatsoever. If I had been paying attention before I cut this off to show you guys, I probably would have left it on there.
I promise some tips and tricks. If I'm fishing and I, if the water stays consistent, Lake Huron is a big body of water. Tawas, Alpena, uh, the backside of the Charities, which is still technically in Saginaw Bay. But we might be fishing in anywhere from 30 to 7 feet of water. 30 to 70. So what I will do is this. I will take, and I'm going to go back to Max Lures again. This is called a hot wing. And I told you before, my wingspan is roughly six foot. So I will cut my harness roughly four foot. And then tie it on to the front. And take that last roughly two foot. Could be as many as two, two and a half. I get excited sometimes when I stretch stuff out. And there's my teaser. You know, this is nothing new. This is not designed for walleye or was not designed for walleye in mine. This was designed for kokini, uh, not salmon. This is too small for salmon. But if you've ever done lake trout fishing and you've seen the old cowbell system, different configuration, but kind of the same thing. It's a flasher. It's an attractor. Right? Now I've got a couple of these in pink. i got a couple of them in green and chartreuse. And then I screwed up. I got smart and thought, I'd, ooh, this is yellow and chartreuse. Motor oil looking. I thought I was getting another pair of hot wings, and I actually got the you know, flashlight trolls. I was like, dang, clear water, bigger flasher. You know, and I don't think anybody's used these for walleye, but I'm going to. This could be the ticket. Something to try anyway. A lot bigger than the hot wings, but they're still going to go. If the water is dirty, and when I say dirty, a couple of weeks ago that water was gin clear and you could see the rocks 20, 25 foot down. So if it dirties up, I'm going to do something a little bit different. Like I said, I mentioned this, I uh, wrote about it back when the newspaper was doing its thing. But this is a original Blue Fox Vibrax spinner. I've cut the treble hook off the back and added a... I'm going to call that a number three split ring. It used to have a pretty big treble hook already in it. And it's still a flasher. It's still an attractor. But because the Blue Fox Vibrax spinners have a brass metal chamber inside this housing right here, it makes noise. How much noise? As much as any crankbait you could think of. Listen to that. That's that brass housing in there rattling against the blade or the body. So I'm going to have uh, I'm going to have a ball bearing swivel at the weight. I'm going to have a ball bearing swivel and snap here. You can tell I've cut that off. I haven't added that to it yet. So again, four foot in the front, two two and a half foot in the back. I got my noisemaker, I got my flasher, all in one thing. And that's just as loud as some of the crankbaits that you're going to find out there. So why not add it to your crawler harness presentation? What am I going to do with those? I'm going to be pulling them behind my church boards. I'm going to give you a little hint before we get started. I'm going to run a combination of boards. I've come up with a new program that is going to be pretty much idiot proof there should be absolutely no way you can actually snag the other lines while you bring a fish in and the key to this is going to be running a really heavy weight or snap weight down on the inside and because if that water is so clear I might be a hundred feet away from the boat gotta have it got to the water is so clean the boat fish are actually gonna see the boat Whereas on Lake Erie, you start bringing a fish back, and you start looking at your counter going, yeah, 15. Any minute, that walleye is going to go crazy because it sees the boat, and right around 13, 10 foot from the boat, or from the tip, it does that. Right. So, further away the better. 
If it's super clean, I'm going to go with the flashlights or the hot wings. If it's dirty, I'm going to be using the Blue Fox spinners. All right. Got rid of the totes. Got the bag. I'm going to show you a couple different things. You know, all my blades used to have the beads already there with that folding clubs. And back at the house, I would have four three-inch 3700 Plano's with beads. And I would buy 500 at a time because of that. Okay? 500 at least of each one. I don't have to do that anymore. So I took some of my favorites out of those three inches, kept it there. And that's going in my bag. This is going to have some more beads. It also has my quick change clevises and it also has, actually you're going to see it better from here, my new stack beads. All right, so those are there. And then I am going to have all those beads that I tore down, or all the blades that I tore down off those old harnesses that used to fill up the other box and a half. All right. This is the blade box I'm using. Can you see it? Because I can't see you. Gotcha. This is from my buddy Paul Doty, Angler's Quest Charters, uh, Facebook Jiggin. The D without the G, G I G G I N, and G I G G I N, yeah, jigging the D. He also has a website now. These aren't on the website yet, but they should be soon. He will be selling these, and I've got a lot of blades in here, as you can tell. My number fives are up on top, two sections of number six. I've got willows, whiptails, and hatchets down here at the bottom. All my favorite blades, except for my big Indianas. I'm still going to have to figure out what I'm going to do with that. My big willow blades, those are going to have to find a new home. But if I get two more boxes, I will have room in that old war bag of mine. Okay? So, just to recap. New storage idea. I've finally gone to quick change clevises because the quick change clevises caught up to me, to my wishes and wants. Uh, before that, I still wouldn't be running them. Uh, the stack beads. Thanks, Ross Robertson. I know you didn't expect to be helping me out, but you did. The quick change clevis, thanks to the improvements from the people at Dutch Fork. Uh, like I said, or I meant to say, you can get them at Fish USA. They are on there. Look at Dutch Fork quick change clevises. Uh, my attractors, my flashers, Blue Fox, Vibrax, the original. The ones I showed you were number sixes. Are they too big? I don't think so. But I've got some number fours just in case. Uh, we might be running in some shallower water. Um, got the hot wings, got the flashlights. Um, say that fast enough you think you're talking about a light held in your hand my only concern is if we get out of Lake Huron in that 70 foot of water are we going to run into lake trout is it going to be like a cowbell am I going to be snagging 12 15 pound lakers out there hopefully preferably I prefer to stick to just the walleye no more plastic quick change clevises small bag Church tackle, uh, the heavier weight I'm going to be running on my TX24s, or more commonly known as the walleye board. My rods, that are lines that are going to be a little bit higher in the water column are going to be on the TX22s. Those are going to be on one and two ounce weights or two pair of twos. But that bottom one or that inside one board is going to be on the walleye board, and I'm going six ounces on that sucker. You cannot snag up if you go middle depth, shallow, and then deep. If it's the outside board, it's going to sneak in below that shallow run. And since that heavy weight is going straight down on that walleye board, I can bring that in. Conversely, if it's the middle board, which is the shallow one, it's still going to come sliding over the top 
of that heavy weight with the harness attached to that. So, Michigan Walleye Tour. I'm getting ready to go. Knock on wood. Whatever this stuff is made out of. We'll keep, uh, keep the train rolling toward the championship. If not, I'm still going to be out in Lake Erie catching walleye. Talk to you guys soon. Bye.